Today we're going to be talking about fats, otherwise known as lipids. And there's going to be three major groups that belong to fats or lipids. We're going to be talking about triglycerides, we're going to be talking about phospholipids, and we're going to be talking about cholesterol. And all of them are going to be very important. Let's go ahead and we'll start with triglycerides. And I'll write that down up here, triglyceride. And tri refers to the fact that they're made up of three fatty acids. And we'll draw those in just a minute. And the glyceride refers to the fact that it's made up of one glycerol molecule. Now triglycerides are the way organisms are going to store energy long term. Turns out that triglycerides are very energy dense. They contain a lot of carbons and hydrogens that are covalently bonded together. So when you break that covalent bond, you release lots of energy. And since there's so many covalent bonds in triglycerides, we can release or we can store a lot of energy. So that's what triglycerides are going to be used for, to store energy long term. And then these triglycerides are going to be kind of spread throughout our body until we need them, and break them down. So let's go ahead and we'll draw a triglyceride. Now, the way I'm going to draw a triglyceride is I'm going to draw a glycerol molecule first. So glycerol consists of one, two, three carbons. And each carbon wants four bonds. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So there we go. That's the backbone. That's the carbon backbone for glycerol. And now I'm going to add some hydrogen. I'm going to add it up here and here and here and here and here. And then the other three chemical bonds are going to be connected to hydroxyl groups. So there we go. These are hydroxyl groups. And we talked a little bit about hydroxyl groups in the carbohydrate video. We said oxygen was slightly negative and hydrogen was slightly positive. And uh, that's because they share electrons unequally. So these functional groups right here are somewhat polar. They're actually very polar. And they're also going to be the sites of chemical reactions, which makes them important functional groups. Now, let's go ahead and we'll write down glycerol down below it. That's what that's called. And we're going to connect up to it some fatty acids. So I'll put plus because we're going to connect up three fatty acids because that's what the tri stands for. And when we draw a fatty acid, we're going to start by drawing the carboxyl group, another functional group, C double bond O, OH. There it is. That's a carboxyl group. Again, a very polar functional group that also serves as the site of a chemical reaction and imparts special properties. Now, that's going to be the first carbon because these, no, these carbons and fatty acids are actually numbered. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. The first one is going to be part of that carboxyl group. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a couple more. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in humans, anyhow, usually these fatty acids are about 12 to 24 carbons long. And this varies with different species, you know, different lengths. So I'll draw seven of them. And then I'm going to draw hydrogens over here. Remember, each carbon wants four chemical bonds. So one, two, three, four. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And I'm going to fill in some hydrogens here. And this is where the energy is stored, right here, between the carbons and the hydrogens. This chemical bond is where that energy is stored. And when we break that chemical bond, we release that energy. All right. And also, the carbon and hydrogen, this chemical bond, is a, it's very nonpolar. The carbon atom and the hydrogen atom tend to share electrons equally, and therefore, they don't have that slightly positive and slightly negative charge. So it tends to be nonpolar. In fact, 
because there are so many carbons and hydrogens compared to this little tiny functional group here, overall fatty acids and overall fat molecules in general are going to be very hydrophobic or nonpolar. They're going to be very water-fearing. They don't like to associate with water. Now the other macromolecules, sugars, proteins, nucleic acids are very hydrophilic, very water-loving. But fats, as a group, are very water-fearing, very hydrophobic, because they're made up of a lot of carbons and hydrogens, which tend to share electrons equally, making them nonpolar or hydrophobic. All right, let's, go, let's get down to business, and we're going to connect these molecules up. And what's going to happen here is a, an enzyme, you know, a helper molecule, is going to break this chemical bond between the carbon and the oxygen, and then we're going to break the chemical bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen here. And we're going to remove that water. We're going to remove it. So the type of chemical reaction this is called is a dehydration reaction. Because think about that. When something gets dehydrated, water gets removed from it. And that's what's happening here. We're removing a water molecule. And then we're going to connect this oxygen to that carbon. And that's going to create a, a covalent bond here between these, the carbon and the, the oxygen. And the water goes out and it joins the other gazillion water molecules in, in the cell or around the cell, whatever the case may be. Um, all right. So we're going to do this two more times. We're going to do it here. And we're going to do it here. We're going to add those fatty acids to this glycerol molecule. Now, every time we build a triglyceride molecule, we're going to produce three water molecules. That's important to remember. And again, we're going to do that through a dehydration reaction. Now, we then store this triglyceride throughout the body until we actually need it. And then, you know, if we're kind of not eating enough calories for several days on end, the body says, okay, i got to draw on my reserves. And it actually takes these triglycerides and it begins to break them apart. It reverses that chemical reaction through a process called hydrolysis. And I'm going to write that on the board, hydrolysis. I'll write it over here, hydrolysis. Hydro means water and lysis means to break apart. So using a different enzyme, the body is actually going to use a water molecule, add it back, and break that chemical bond apart. And ultimately what we're going to end up with is one glycerol and three fatty acids. And then those components will then be used, they'll be further broken down through other processes and be used to make energy, ATP. And that's what's going to happen. All right. Let's talk about the second type of fat. The second type of fat, that's number one, the second type of fat is going to be called a phospholipid. And phospholipids are very similar to triglycerides. Now, what organisms do, or what nature does, is if at all possible, instead of building something brand new from scratch, we simply modify something that already exists. And that's what we're going to do here. We're simply going to remove this fatty acid and we're going to replace it with something different, like a phosphate group. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write a phosphate. Here's a phosphorus atom, double bonded to an oxygen, and we're going to add a hydroxyl group, another hydroxyl group, and another hydroxyl group. That's a phosphate. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to attach this up. And you can sort of see what, what's going to happen here already. We're going to break this chemical bond here, and we're going to break the chemical bond there. We're going to remove the water, and we're going to attach this oxygen to that phosphorus atom. And that's actually going to create a phospholipid. So a phospholipid consists of a glycerol, a glycerol molecule, two fatty acids, and a phosphate. And this 
phospholipid, because of this phosphate group, because this is very polar, and the rest is, in a sense, very nonpolar, because it consists of lots of carbons and hydrogens, it's going to have very unique properties. And living organisms use those phospholipids to make their cell membranes. And how those phospholipids actually orient themselves determines what the cell membrane is going to look like and how it's going to function. So this is actually very important information which is going to lead us into cell membranes uh, that we're going to talk about a little bit later. Alright, so that's phospholipids. The third type of fat is going to be called cholesterol. And I'm going to go ahead and erase this. And cholesterol is that fat that everybody loves to hate. And it's unfortunate because cholesterol is really not a bad guy. He is under certain circumstances, but so are lots of different things. If you take too much vitamin A, that'll make you sick. If you drink too much water, that will make you sick. If you consume too much cholesterol or make too much cholesterol, that can also cause problems. So cholesterol is an absolutely essential molecule when it's produced or consumed in quantities that the organism can use it at. Alright, so what is, actually, what is cholesterol actually used for? It's used for a lot of different things actually. We need cholesterol. And because we need cholesterol so bad, and only animals produce cholesterol. Plants don't, fungi don't, they don't produce cholesterol. Only animals do. So the only way you get cholesterol, you know, the only way you take cholesterol into your body is by eating animal products. Milk, butter, meat, eggs, things like that. No plant products have cholesterol. Now, in animals, the liver is actually going to make the cholesterol. And the liver makes all the cholesterol you'll ever need. And the reason it makes that cholesterol is because you need cholesterol to make your sex hormones, to make testosterone, to make estrogen, to make progesterone. Absolutely essential hormones. And then we're also going to use it and we're going to take that cholesterol and we're going to put it into the cell membranes along with the phospholipids. And what cholesterol does is it helps regulate the flexibility of the cell membrane. We'll talk about that later, but very important. We don't want our cell membranes too rigid and we don't want them too fluid or flexible either. We want them just right. And cholesterol helps us do that. Now, the third thing cholesterol is going to be used for is it's actually used to make bile. Bile is used to digest fats. The liver makes the, uh, makes the uh, bile you know, from cholesterol. It stores that bile in the gallbladder, this little sac right underneath the liver, and then when you eat a fatty meal, that gallbladder is going to contract. It's going to squeeze, because that's what it is. It's kind of like a hollow muscle. And it squeezes that bile into the small intestine where it's going to be used to help digest fats. So it plays a crucial role. We kind of really need bile. So cholesterol is really a good guy. Where, do, where does it get its bad reputation from? Because people have this tendency to overconsume cholesterol. Too much, too many eggs, too much meat, too much this, too many animal products in general, and you actually are bringing more cholesterol into your body that it can process, that it can use. And that excess cholesterol then tends to accumulate and stick to the inside of your blood vessels and results in heart disease and, 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 and arterial disease and things like that. So as long as you don't consume it in excess, you're probably, for the most part, going to be okay. Well, let's go ahead and we'll draw cholesterol. And cholesterol is going to look a little bit different than the other two, but it's still going to be made of lots of carbons and lots of hydrogens, just like the last two. So how are we going to draw cholesterol? We're going to start by drawing a hexagon. So there it is. There's one hexagon. And again, at the corners, it's understood that there are carbon atoms connected by these covalent bonds. Now we're going to draw another hexagon. There it is. And we're going to draw one more. But it's going to be up here. You can't just put it anywhere. It has to be up here. So there it is. There's our third hexagon. 
hexagon, 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 and pentagon, a fire carbon ring. So this is a fused ring structure. And whenever you see this fused ring structure, just like this, that's cholesterol. And we also refer to this fused ring structure as a steroid. So cholesterol is a steroid, and so is testosterone, so is estrogen, so is progesterone. Now typically when we hear steroids, we think of, you know, big muscles, big muscles, athletes, things like that, and that is true. That's a subset of these molecules. It turns out that testosterone, which can be, if you take it in excess quantities, can build pretty big muscles and make you stronger and faster. And testosterone is actually built from this steroid ring structure, built from cholesterol. So testosterone plus you know, estrogen, project, those are all steroid hormones. But estrogen, if you take too much estrogen, or you take additional estrogen, you're not going to end up with big muscles. It's just not going to happen. But anyhow, that's our steroid structure, and that is cholesterol. And by putting functional groups in different places around this steroid structure, we can create different types of steroid molecules, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, for example. That's going to be it for fats.